You ready? Let's go. <clears throat> In three, two, one. Hey, hey guys. guys! Welcome back to our <laughs> channel. <laughs> It's your girl Stephanie, and I'm chilling here with my lovely husband Hungani. We are the. <laughs> what are you doing? Are you doing what I do? <laughs> we are the Jobus, and this is Jobus Uncut. Pam 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 pam. Uh, if you've tuned into this video, thank you so much. Please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. And go ahead and subscribe and click on the notification button so we've actually realized that quite a few of you um, in fact not a few a lot of you watch our videos but haven't yet subscribed and also with our subscribers the subscribers we love you guys yes but a lot of you haven't clicked on the notification bell so please click on that notification bell so that you don't miss out on anything that is dropping on this channel Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I'm ready. So she has no idea what's going on. I'm not today. ready. Guys, I don't know why Hungani loves. I think we did a segment similar to this, right? Yes, we did. Uh, where Hungani thinks up a bunch of questions that I think he wants to intentionally have the camera in front of me so that I'm forced to answer these questions. Mm. But anyway. Okay. You do so well, baby. You know, you answer them with poise and with elegance, and you're just so bourgeois, you know? Ask away. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be asking my lovely wife some questions, and um, let's see how she responds. And um, and I genuinely yeah, like genuine, genuine. I don't know. She has no idea. I don't. Know. Okay, here we go. Ready? So I have a few. We'll see, like, if we manage to get through them, because you know some oh. questions. <laughs> Key. I get some and questions. Don't ask like questions about things that will make me cringe. What could possibly make you cringe? I know you. You're naughty. I'm naughty. Yes. Ah, I've, you, you guys know, Benny. All right, here we go. Question number one. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. What's your opinion? And in fact, please comment down below like if you feel like you want to answer this question as well, male or female. There's no like, you know. What's your opinion on men or guys? Waiting to get their money right, waiting to get the right car, waiting to own a house mm -hmm. as a measure of being ready for marriage. So, you know, it's like, why haven't you? Because, like, yo, man, my money's not oh, right. Oh, okay. You know, I don't have the right job. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't even have, like, a BMW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a this, you know. Um, Your idea and ideology of, of what marriage is about mm. i would not say i necessarily agree with and not only that that type of opinion i think could only stem from either having grown up in an environment where you've been taught that that is what um, you need to have beforehand and that is what constitutes provision and then or on the other hand you've been in relationships where women are kind of like this, these are the things that I want before um, I would get married to you or get married at all. Either way, I don't agree mm -hmm. because marriage is so much more than that, that material. materialistic mm -hmm. things. In fact, I'm all about us building together, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I would love and am grateful that I got into a relationship where we did start, you know, kind of from the bottom and we, you know, started from the bottom. Oh, look at you. <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm all for kind of, that's not a measure of, and I don't think it has anything to do with your ability to provide mm. based on the type of car you have and so forth. I think that um, it is important for you to be in a position, obviously, uh, male and female, to be able to, you know, live a certain type of life. Yeah, sure. Mm. But I don't think that it's a measure of being ready for marriage or not, honestly, in my opinion. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense. So then would you say that the the premise of getting ready for marriage should be more of a whether internal yes. mental psychological spiritual yes, type of growth than rather a materialistic material. type of exactly growth. because you can be 
you could you could have all of those things cars house whatever even if it's not the fanciest but you could mm. have all of those things and be so mentally unstable mentally um like uh, struggling you mm. know all these kinds of things and then you bring that into a marriage and you realize that all these things you have you know is not even it doesn't help the marriage at all but mm. two healthy people two whole and complete healthy people entering into a union is what is going to make a marriage work um you know in the long in the yeah, long far run beyond far beyond, beyond that so stuff. i would i would rather appreciate a man who's going to take his money and invest in his health mm. you know and his whatever you know like his well his well-being and yeah. that kind of stuff and then say to me no I'm not in a space yet to be in a marriage because I'm still, you know, figuring, figuring out, out certain things about myself. Mm-hmm. Whether you will 100% find yourself 100% figured out or 100%, you know, financially ready, maybe not. But you yourself will know when you're at the space and place where now you can handle bringing another person into your life. But I will definitely put mental health and so forth above stuff. Mm. My girl. So, um, <clears throat> when the smoke of this <laughs> is just horrible, but anyway, um, when, when you fall in love with someone, are you fearful of losing that love? So you, you, you can feel that you, you fall in for someone. Or even falling for me. You know? yeah. At that point where you recognize that your my feelings are getting real. Are getting real. Do you have moments or do you find yourself in a space where now you fear if I continue in this way mm-hmm. I could possibly lose it. So then from feeling like I'm falling in love, now does a sense of fear yeah. come with that? Or do you find that you can kind of deal with the fact that I'm falling in love yeah. and that's where I'm going. Yeah. Um, Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll speak from my personal experience. Hey, this of might course. differ. But I think um, at the beginning, falling in love is a feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later on, love in itself is not a feeling mm-hmm. per se. Right? What, what would you say? Then? then love is a choice. Right, um, and that doesn't mean that because it's a choice, you stop feeling mm-hmm. either. Right, it's just the more you're together, you know, and the more you've settled in your love, then you choose each other every single day. But you still, you know, Hongani sometimes goes to these events and then I'm never invited to anyway, and then he's <laughs> looking all type of like, hmm, you know, and and I'm like, hmm, okay. Or he does a gesture of buying me flowers or something. I'm like, hmm, okay. So the feelings can still be there, right? Mm. But I think later on, love becomes more of a choice. But at the beginning, when you are falling in love, let's say, Mm. and you have all those feelings and excitement and all that kind of stuff, Mm. for me, I think I was not fearful necessarily of, like, losing the love or falling out of love but I was very fearful of getting hurt Mm -hmm. because I'd been hurt so many times in my previous relationship so my fear was just like oh I'm being vulnerable and opening myself up Mm -hmm. to this person and with that comes Comes. the possibility of being hurt and once you've been hurt a certain way repeatedly you tend to have fear yeah. that it will happen again. again and therefore then sometimes you hold back with yeah. the degree to which you love that person mm. um, in case but that's not the way you want to you know conduct any relationship I think that uh, being in a relationship is a, is a risk and loving someone is a risk and it mm. may or may not um, pay off mm. but at the end of the day I think if it pays off then it's a risk worth taking but how do you now navigate going past those like moments of holding back where yeah. you're like, yo, ish. 
like what is it is it something that you deal with with your significant other is yeah. it something you deal with with self is it something you seek therapy yeah. for I think it depends on really where you are in your relationship I think mm. like right at the beginning stages for myself maybe it was a sort of battle thing within myself and trying mm. to figure out why do I feel this way and well knowing why I f- feel this way but not kind of um projecting projecting that onto you but i think the more serious you become and then you get into marriage if that fear still exists for instance within marriage mm-hmm. um like you have fear of your partner leaving or your husband leaving or you guys you know then finding out what's the root cause of that fear you mm-hmm. know um is it do you have abandonment issues is it the fear of being alone is it the fear of um whatever it yeah. might be then i think it requires you to kind of you know um do a deep deep dive into that yeah. so depending on i think where you are in the relationship or where you are in the marriage will determine how you handle and overcome that fear you see why i do these things because it's just like it's like another like uh <laughs> <laughs> It's like another, basically you should have a podcast. Um, it's like another moment just to kind of like really dive into the mind that is of my lovely wife. And like, isn't she just so beautiful? Like, no, like jokes aside, like I'm yeah, being genuine, baby. you know. So we fall in love, we get married, and we have a beautiful child. Mm-hmm. Now there's postpartum life mm-hmm. right? what would you say is your biggest challenge when it comes to life after birth for when for myself yeah, not as I yeah, we've yeah, spoken yeah. about intimacy yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. haven't for watched my, that video go check it out for myself yeah you know if I had to be very honest and very frank it will probably be my weight gain slash attempt at weight loss specifically mm. weight yeah. you know um after birth, after birth. not during pregnancy. not during pregnancy after birth. so i've had quite the the journey journey <laughs> um i've had quite the battle i'm still battling within mm. the battle why i'm getting emotional i don't know but we're gonna roll with it because mm. hey it's fresh <laughs> um so you know I, I posted something in the week where i said for me personally you know i love when i see transformation pictures when women show this is what i look like and this is all the hard work i put in and this is how i look now and i love those and they are very motivating mm. but i resonate more with with stories as people are going through them yeah, because yeah. i find that i relate you find yourself in the storm and imagine the level of vulnerability and openness you have to have when you are struggling with the thing yeah and then sharing it yeah. right and i guess that's why it's a bit um emotional it's and it's a bit hot because yeah. i'm i'm living in it right now so mm. For those who don't know or don't find me on Instagram or whatever the case might be. So after giving birth to Ru, so before giving birth to Ru, I went on a weight loss journey. I lost about 8 kgs. Amazing. Um, fell pregnant. Through my pregnancy, I, as far as possible, was still training, eating relatively well. I think I even recorded myself training and stuff like that. And then I was on bed rest. But nonetheless, after I had given birth, like my that baby weight like dropped off yeah. right it was dropping off yeah. and i went for my six week checkup i think at my six week checkup i'm so i think i had gained like for numbers sake i think i gained something like 13 kgs or something somewhere there mm. and after my six week checkup i'd like already dropped three mm. so i was already like really close to under 70 mm. um because i went from I'll give you guys numbers 59 kgs when i was pregnant to like 73 or 4 or somewhere there mm, 72.8 something 72.8 and then i after after my six week checkup i was like 69 78 if, if mm. um, i'm not mistaken and then i was like so happy about it because i was like yay to me thank oh lord you know mm. 
And then I don't know what happened. I know now, but then I don't know what happened from October. So um, a few months later, I started gaining weight at a rapid, when I say rapid pace, I'm talking about like two or more kgs a month. Mm. Not only am I gaining two or more kgs a month, I am gaining it whilst having a personal trainer, mm. whilst being on a pretty like restrict not restrictive but a pretty good eating plan i'd yeah. say like 80 percent of the time you can testify to the fact mm-hmm. waking up so exhausted going to gym making sure i get there and despite this i'm gaining weight and i'm just like i am depressed because people can say what they say and that it's not about that la la bundle of joy all that jazz it's amazing Mm. but at the end of the day when you are looking at yourself and the level of work you're putting in and it's not responding the way it's the way it's supposed to it's a psychological battle because Mm. you just want to give up then you got to deal with people constantly commenting about it, especially family. Mm. So if you're my family and you're watching this and you know you're one of the people who kept asking me about my weight, yeah. Mm. You know, family asking or making comments about it or social media making comments about it or being in the comment section or being in your DMs and Mm. you're sitting with this in that moment and you're like, but I'm trying, I'm doing stuff, you know. Mm. I'm I'm not sitting on my butt and um, not doing anything about it, you know. And you know there are always those people that are just kind of like, well, you got to work harder, you know, well, focus on your nutrition, all these people. Anyway, so when I gained, like from October, October, November, <laughs> December, January, guys, I kid you not when I tell you, I gained eight kgs mm. after, is it eight or ten? What is it? I think it's ten. Seventy-two. Seventy-two. So it's just before 80, like yeah. 79.1 whatever. So like eight kgs. Yeah. So I gained eight kgs after birth, but also in a matter of the blink of an eye, like mm-hmm. in the matter of four in a matter of four months. So I ended up going to my gynecologist. Um I'm not telling the whole story right now, but anyway, maybe it will, you know, be of motivation to someone out there. But yeah, so I ended up going to my gynecologist because I realized something's wrong. And we ended up running a bunch of tests. Mm-hmm. And for those who don't know, I did do a video on it. Um, I do have PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome, which is basically an hormone hormonal imbalance. And um, there's different symptoms when it comes to PCOS and one of those symptoms is like weight gain and really a struggle to lose it and that's uh, to do with your insulin and insulin resistance and so after running some tests test came back gynecologist called me back she's like yo look at your insulin numbers I think it's four it high. high 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 above the norm and I just said to her I was like what am I supposed to do I am I'm not Yes, I'm not like at the gym six, seven times a week. Yes, I don't eat 99.9%. But for the most part, my gosh, you know. Mm. And she just sort of went, I mean, she giggled, not laughing at me, but just like, shame. I know, yeah. you know, you're doing all of this. And also like, and you're not alone. You're not alone. And it's fine. Let's, let's, let's get back onto, you know, my meds and... Now I have an appointment with a registered dietitian so that we can just rework everything that I'm eating because once you're insulin resistant, which I won't go into, you can read up on it, um, your body really struggles to break down any form of, and it's not just about sugar, but it break, struggles to break down any form of food that you put into your body and convert it into energy, it just stores it. So that's where we are right now as you are watching this video. Um, And so, yeah, so I have an appointment currently and I'll let you guys know later on or whatever. Let me know if you want to know about this journey uh, with with the registered dietitian so that we can look at, even though I might think I'm eating really well, maybe there's certain things that I... Yeah, like the choices. The choices that I make. So we're going to go in that direction. I'm still training. Well, I haven't trained in a minute because... 
set but i'm still training um and i'll still continue training and we'll see how it goes guys we'll see how it goes but to answer your question in a very long-winded way that is the biggest thing that i've struggled with postpartum it's not the sleepless nights it's not it's not it's not anything else but literally feeling like a stranger in my own body that's a quote right there (sighs) feeling like a stranger in my Look, I I appreciate you, you know, like being honest and yeah. vulnerable. Yeah. I didn't think you would divulge the whole story. Sorry. And no, no, it's, no it's, it's, it's to your own, you know. Um, and I really do hope that for anyone that is watching, like it might not be the exact same Gosh, journey yeah. or the same story that you have, but whatever your challenge is, like it's okay to journey through it as long as you have you know the right people to support you not everyone needs to know exactly what your struggles are you know um, the same way like there might be some family or some friends or some of you guys in the comment section commenting about her weight and whatnot and you don't even realize the impact of what it is that you're saying you know Mm. and it's just that thing that we often talk about which is be mindful of what it is that you're saying yeah. to people because you really don't know yeah. what they're going through. You don't know what their challenges are. And yet you might just be adding another whole bunch of yeah. weight, excuse the pun, to, <laughs> to, to an already hot Terrible. Situation. It was terrible, but I'm glad I get laugh about it. Jeez. You know, to an already hot situation. So let's rather choose peace, kindness, yeah. and love when we are sharing and when we are spending time with our um, peoples, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And I mean, to, and to all the, the ladies, I would just want to specifically say, mm-hmm. Your challenge might not be weight after. Sometimes it's weight too much weight, weight loss. loss yeah. Like some women after giving birth, you know, through breastfeeding and stuff, are just mm. struggling to keep on their weight. You yeah. know, and sometimes people, you know, especially when you're like a believer, people always like, you know, make things so over spiritual. Guys, you can be saved and sanctified and be concerned or have a feeling about what mm. you look like. Yeah. I mean, come on, you know, we really don't have to make it that uh, deep, so yeah. to speak. Everybody cares about what they look like. I yeah. don't care what you say. So to whatever it is, whether it's weight loss, whether it's weight, you know, too much weight gain, whether it's struggling with this, maybe it's the, what is it called, the mummy belly, fuba mm-hmm. situation, mm-hmm. maybe it's stretch marks, whatever the case might be. It's like my biggest thing that I am, I'm going to say I have not mastered it, but I make a conscious decision every day is to go, okay, I acknowledge that I'm feeling this way, but I am also going to recognize everything that's beautiful about this day. And Mm -hmm. it sounds like some quote or whatever, but it's really helped me to not completely be consumed by it. You know, I can think about it and I can feel some type of way about it, but I think at the beginning it was all consuming and it's all I thought about Mm -hmm. all the time, asking Gani all the time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, there's so much stuff happening yeah. you know and so, so much you could be and grateful so for. much i'm grateful for so i literally am now like okay i feel like this but, but um i acknowledge it and i see it mm-hmm. but i also feel like this yeah. and so i am happy that i'm finding those things to be happy and grateful about mm-hmm. which is really good and some days will be better than some others. days are definitely better than others and and i mean that's that's fine, you know. Mm. Um, the bunch of struggles that go with it, you know. But ultimately, I'm I'm really enjoying life, um, for the most part. Yeah, I love you. Love you too. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Please make sure next you... time I'm doing this, I'm <laughs> gonna get questions for you to answer. Please do. <laughs> Please make sure you give us a thumbs up. Please make sure you comment down below if you enjoyed this video. And if you made it up until this point, you definitely need to click on that subscribe button and that notification bell. We will see you in our next video. Oh, and by the way, we have a mailing list. So please make sure you click on the link down in our description and join our mailing list. We have over 300 of you that have joined so far, which is amazing. And soon you will be getting an 
an email so please make sure you join the mailing list before we start sending out our emails bye i've been sitting here like this waiting oh sorry you. sergeant and out and out lovely oh oh you got emotional i guys. did you know and and i'm realizing that it's okay it you really know is. it is fine to be well. to be vulnerable and to be emotional and as much as i hate it because my the ego oh the ego the ego everybody's got that to be like i must be crying on camera <laughs> Right, okay, you're clearly you're back on set. <laughs> <laughs>